we're getting into the Christmas spirit. It's just nine days to go. To get you ready, between the pages today, what are your childhood Christmas memories? We find out from the people on the streets. Then we'll turn the page to the beautiful tourism spot of Treasure Beach, somewhere to relax and unwind during the holiday. We'll close the pages with the importance of giving blood. I'm Theodore Henry. Stay with us. It promises to be an informative show. Are you being promised lots of money, trips overseas, marriage, gifts, and other benefits without strings attached? What of jobs with excellent salaries but require no experience? You could become a victim of human trafficking, modern day slavery, where you're forced to work or perform sexual favors. Remember, not everything that glitters is gold. If you or anyone you know has been a victim of human trafficking, call 811 or 1 888 Protect. Be wise, open your eyes, spot them, stop them. A message brought to you by the National Task Force Against Trafficking in Persons. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your GIS News for Friday, December 16th. The Ministry of National Security continues to strengthen the police's mobile capacity with the addition of more pre-owned vehicles to their fleet. On Wednesday, seven motor vehicles and 26 motorbikes were handed over by Portfolio Minister Robert Montague. The minister says he expects the vehicles to be put to good use, especially during the busy holiday season. There was an operation that yielded some five weapons along the, the highway. So in sending these units out into the field, right across Jamaica, it will have an impact. And what the Commissioner has assured me is that the police stations that are without motor vehicles will get the, the priority for these vehicles. Minister Montague says the force will be receiving seven more vehicles next week. He says the procurement process for another 200 has been completed. The Ministry of Health has launched a project to reduce the time patients have to wait to see a doctor in public hospitals. The Reduction in Waiting Time project was launched at the Bustamante Hospital for Children yesterday. It will be rolled out in all hospitals across the island after a successful pilot to test the initiative in the six most crowded hospitals and nearby clinics. We have seen different levels of success. We know we have some more work to do. We know we have some more resources to commit. The intention is to roll it out in all the hospitals, the 24, um, 23, if you exclude UWI, over the period of time. So once we get into the next budget, we'll announce a few more. Under the pilot phase, the triage process was enhanced by creating an immediate registration process to improve the customer service experience in accident and emergency departments. Jamaica is on track to meet the October to December quantitative performance criteria and targets under its agreement with the International Monetary Fund, IMF. Co-chair of the Economic Program Oversight Committee, Keith Duncan, says that projection is based on the positive macroeconomic indicators for October. We're going to look at the primary balance of the central government. As at October, these and these are October numbers, we're at $56.2 billion against a target of $37.8 billion for the end of October and against the December indicative target, the December actual review target, the December review target of $54 billion. So therefore, the primary surplus is already ahead of the target for December as at the end of October. Tax revenues are also ahead of target reported at $245.9 billion for October, $4.7 billion more than projected. And there are other positive indicators. Non-borrowed reserves, as at October, at $1.422 billion US dollars, and the target for December is $1.4 billion, $1.405 billion. Mr. Duncan was giving his first report as the new co-chair of EPOC earlier this week. The Jamaica Fire Brigade is proposing legislation that will give the agency authority to inspect private dwellings. Senior Deputy Superintendent Emilio Ebanks says too many homes are being built without proper escape routes, which can put occupants at risk in the event of a fire. 
He says the legislative change would ensure that private dwellings are subjected to the same kind of scrutiny as public buildings. Over 90% of the fires that people die from are actually residential fires. And in most cases, these deaths could have been avoided. So we're actually looking to move legislation to have that kind of authority so we can go in and stop a situation or give guidance. Mr. Banks was speaking at a recent JIS think tank held at its Western Bureau. He urged persons who are constructing private houses to speak with the fire brigade for guidance. And finally, the Ministry of Labor and Social Security is expanding its career and parenting initiative into more schools. The Robert Lightburn High School in St. Thomas was brought on board recently. Over the next five years, students and parents at the institution will benefit from assistance in making wise career choices. This year, as we work with students from grade seven, next year, we hope to continue and work with students in grades 10 and 11, and we will be hosting a week of career activities dubbed Life After Grade 11, and that will be here at Robert Lightburn. It is our hope that the students, parents, and teachers will embrace this career initiative and participate fully to make it a success. Robert Lightburn High School is the third school and the first rural institution to benefit from the initiative. It includes personality testing to help determine career preferences and offers advice on updating resumes, networking, preparing for work, and improving proficiencies in relevant skill and knowledge areas. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. The holidays are about connecting with friends and loved ones and making time for fun. But even as you go about enjoying the holiday season, it's important to remember the hidden dangers. Consider these simple tips to keep safe around the home. Cut down overgrown hedges close to your home to improve visibility around your property. And watch out for persons acting suspiciously in your community. When inside, especially at night, remember to secure windows and doors with deadbolts and try not to leave keys where they can be seen from outside. If you are leaving your home, make sure to lock all windows and doors and do not tell too many persons that you are going away for the holiday. Another safety tip to remember involves your house keys. Do not leave spare keys in mailboxes and other places around the home. If you must, leave them with a relative or a neighbor you can trust. It's recommended that you install a security system and safety lights that are triggered by movement as these help to deter criminals. And if you feel there is an intruder inside your home, make an alarm for help or call the police. Do not attempt to investigate yourself. As you go about enjoying all the holiday has to offer, be vigilant and keep safe. And also, please remember your neighbors, look out for anything or anyone suspicious, and contact the police for assistance. John Kuno, roaming the streets on Grand Market night, starlights, childhood Christmas memories are endless. What's yours? We stroll down memory lane in this next feature. It's Christmas When I all will come together and heat and drink and laugh and shopping and all those things. That is the best. As a child growing up, my favorite Christmas memories were um, expecting the gifts on Christmas morning. For many of us, Christmas is the most wonderful time of the year. Filled with our favorite things, food, family and fun. Let's share in some of your most memorable moments. My mommy made it special for me and my brothers and my sisters. Food, the decorations, the smell of fresh paint. What else she used to do? Oh Lord, food, a lot of food. The house, you know, the house we always look forward to. There were a lot of changes, like at Christmas time, paint up, new curtains, new clothes, church. Just a junk on the time and the, with Dali when we little, we wish I was small again. You know, the junk with the pitchy patchy and um, the devil and the belly woman. <laughs> never, never see them. Follow them to distance. Up and down, follow them all, one at a time, follow them until we are lost. 
<laughs> so let me remember about Christmas, baby. <laughs> well, I never got to experience John Kuno, but judging from her laughter, it seems I missed out. Christmas time has always been that time of year, though, when Barry will come, as family members from overseas would return to Jamaica to bring gifts while sharing the festivities with their loved ones. Is that your favorite memory? Whenever the family get together, we normally eat dinner, play domino cards, and have a little one-on-one -on -one wrestling. So. <laughs> well, back in the days, when it's Christmas time, my mother always them the shopping, always buy me nice shoes, nice pants, nice stuff. I'm a little uh, pretty hot. <laughs> As a child growing up for Christmas, I remember when I being at home. It's a time where the family normally come together. You know, my, um, my aunties from overseas would normally come home and then we would all be there, you know, we'll talk and share. Generally, um, we always prepare to go to church. We grew up in church. You go to church in the morning and then in the evening we go to Christmas market very early. We go by what, the waterfront. In those days, we used to have white sa sailors coming in Jamaica. And um, when they're downtown, you see them white soldiers in the white clothes and you know they look so beautiful. Sister Mary, put on your best dress. We are going to a Christmas party. We are going to the star. Yeah. Yeah. We used to love to play with our shibum and we have a have a little pop gun there with some cock shot. We used to love that. And I used to also love Fifi when you blow it up and make the sound. And also the gas. It's just so excited and nice, you know, I did growing up. Christmas time, you know, my time, you know. When Christmas was we used to bust plenty of clappers and balloons and them sort of things. Things like those and hide and seek like mud and all them things there. So I just like that, you know, and Christmas was nice. What I was excited about when I was a child, I would want to go to Grand Market to buy a dolly and stuff like that and enjoy the excitement of the roast beef and the roast pork and them things there. I always remembered one Christmas day when my mom came out with the ham glazed with the pineapple and the cherries on top. Delicious. What about you? What are some of your favorite memories surrounding food? We eat up the cake and things will be great. Drink up the wine and things will be fine, yes. Christmas cake, fried chicken, the rice and peas, the sorrel potato salad, everything man, a lot of food for Christmas. On Christmas Day, you, know, you, would, you would get the breakfast in the morning, maybe roast yam and um, salt fish or something like that, the chocolate tea, and we would, we would have had that, and then you know, you'd expect a large Christmas dinner. For me personally, I remember growing up as a youth, um, on Christmas Eve, we used to do the, the rubbing of the, the, the butter and sugar together to make the, the, the good Christmas um, fruit cake. Even the little ones have fond memories of their own when it comes to Christmas food. The sweet potato pun on Christmas day, Lord of God, it tastes good! Me remember last year when my mother, when my grandmother cooked the pork and everything with the pineapple, it tastes good, not true. Well, for me, my favorite Christmas memory was caroling early on a Christmas morning with my grandfather in the country. I definitely had a lot of fun hearing your stories. This Christmas, make new memories with your family and your friends. Happy holidays. I love you all. Merry Christmas to all of you. It's Christmas time again, everyone. So come on and sing along with me. Come on. Dash no paper, no dash no plastic. Dispose your garbage responsibly. No know how to recycle. Learn it quick, and if you drop it, better pick up every piece of it. Plastics last forever. Don't forget the bits, cause when them touch the street, them end up in at the sea. Collect pan the reef where they fish them feed, and when you want seafood, I eat your eat. Island clean, so clean. From the peaks to the beach, so clean. 
No dirty up Jamaica, please don't do it. No dirty up Jamaica, no dirty up Jamaica, no dirty up Jamaica, no dirty up Jamaica. The winter tourist season officially kicked off yesterday. Another record-breaking season is anticipated, with more than 1 million visitors projected to touch our shores during this period, which ends in April. We as Jamaicans don't have winter to deal with, but that doesn't mean we can't vacation during the period. So, here's a family tourism spot to enjoy during the break, if you're taking one. A quaint bed and breakfast perched on the edge. Villas nestled within beautiful flora and fauna. The perfect pathway for road races. We're at the desert coast of Jamaica, the spot that's said to receive the least amount of rainfall in the country, yet verdant with natural beauty. Welcome to Treasure Beach, St. Elizabeth. The area of Treasure Beach, St. Elizabeth has been earmarked as a pilot project to drive the development of community tourism across the island and rightly so. For more than a decade, the residents have been capitalizing on the natural resources which surround them and bonded together to create an environment in which tourists can visit, sit, and sleep. This was long before the term community tourism was even popularized. Persons in Treasure Beach want this area to remain low density. We want development, but we want low density, sustainable development. We do not want, we do not wish to become a commercial resort high density area. But with the island pulling in more than 3.65 million visitors in 2015, Treasure Beach is pushing hard to snatch a significant share of that number from the all-inclusive resorts. They want visitors to know that Treasure Beach is where there is peace. The area covers some 25 square miles, including the communities of Great Bay, Billards Bay and Fort Charles. This is the Breadbasket Parish. With about 70,000 farmers in residence, food is abundant and natural. It offers a recipe for farm to table, dinner and lunches. Wellness festivals and sport events are also on offer at the place where public and private partners harmoniously erect business and social enterprises. The products produced out of those workshops, we sell in our craft shop. The, the people who participate, they get a share of it and we get a share of it. We keep 20%, the other 80% is split up to the people who make the products. This is the perfect getaway for the people who are up and about, busy every day. Welcome to Treasure Beach, and welcome to the one of the several Treasure Tours buses that we have here. We're very happy that this is a JTB approved, Transportation Authority approved bus. The people that come here, they want the height of living, you know? We come here to just be happy in the sunshine and in the sea. We have been coming here since 1998, first time, and we've come back to Itaw Rest five times. In support of Treasure Beach's ventures, the government has provided an injection of $48 million from the Tourism Enhancement Fund to help the community implement its developmental projects. The program forms part of government's efforts to execute the community tourism policy recently tabled in Parliament. It has proven that through community tourism, the earnings gained from the broader sector can be further filtered to the ordinary man. Whether you're a farmer, whether you're a fisherman, whether you're a bar owner, a restaurant, you name it, a coconut vendor, you are a part of this fabric of what we call Treasure Beach. We hope to see you soon. Come home to Treasure Beach. You'll want to stay. On our roads, remember, take time, be courteous, drive good, walk good. Part of keeping our roads safe is ensuring the vehicles we drive are mechanically safe, meeting all roadworthy requirements. And besides that, we must be good drivers and avoid risk-taking and sensation-seeking behaviors which are prone to causing road crashes.
The National Blood Bank is appealing to citizens to remember to donate blood, particularly during this time of year. This is one gift you can give this Christmas that won't cost you a penny. Watch this next feature and conquer your fears of giving blood. There are many fears and misconceptions about giving blood, some of which we'll be dispelling for you today. Joining me is Acting Director of the National Blood Transfusion Service, Dr. Veronica Taylor. Thanks for coming, Dr. Taylor. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Okay, Dr. Taylor, one of the first uh, fears that we want to discuss today is the fear of needles or being too nervous to donate. Okay. Uh, first of all, donating blood allow that you can save three lives. So when you are coming to donate blood, you have to have that in mind. Uh, I know that there are myths or fears to donated blood because the size of the needle is like a mosquito bite. Don't be scared. That unit will be open in front of you and it's an easy way to go. Our nurses are well capable to do this uh, procedure. You cannot be scared because when you go into donated blood, that unit of uh, or the bag of unit of blood will be open in front of you. So it's single use. Uh, you will feel comfortable. There is not a way, not at all, to catch any disease. Some persons also believe that they cannot donate blood because they've had other diseases such as ZV and ZV. Uh, this is not the case. You can also donate if you have had these diseases, right? Okay, I would like to clarify that. Uh, when you come into donated blood, you will have an interview. So in that interview, you will, uh, the nurse will be rigorous, asking you a few questions that you will answer because it will be for the benefit of the recipient. So they will ask you a few questions as if you have been in contact with person that have sick B. If that is the case, you will have defer for 15 days. If you have been uh, contacted the, the sick B, you will be deferred for 15 days. If you, after donating blood, uh, started with symptoms, you will need to contact the blood uh, transfusion service at any way that you have been donated the blood because we will defer that that blood will be discarded. So we will have a quarantine of the blood for a few days in uh, awaiting for any symptoms that the donors could have in that period of time. And Dr. Taylor, what about those persons who believe that they will not be able to partake in any physical activity or sport after donating blood? One of our recommendations when we do the interview, if you go to the gym every day, the day that you go do, uh, donated the blood, will not do it because remember that we have to remove a uh, 500 milliliter of, uh, of the volume of your blood. My recommendation is increase your uh, water intake. Taking more than three liters, you will be okay for the following day, be doing your gym or your sport activity. That's great. And what about those persons who believe that they will not have enough blood after giving blood, so they avoid giving blood in its entirety. What I will say, your bone marrow, removing 500 milliliters will be uh, hyperactive and will put in place in the, again, your, knee, your red cell, your platelet and your white blood cell, so nothing to worry about. Uh, persons sometimes say that they're just too busy to donate. What do you have to say regarding, you know, how long the process is and, you know, the other blood drives that you have to facilitate persons who may not be able to come here um, directly to donate blood? Okay, that is a good question. We have a, the possibility to go to your workplace to allow you with a blood drive to help us to in, uh, increase our number of units of blood in the blood bank. So we have different ways to uh, allow to, to you to donate it blood. One, coming to the blood collection center. Two, a blood drive. Three, we use a, a mobile unit that go to the different places to allow the person that interested to donate blood to go to that facility. The other uh, way that you can, the, your day that you are resting is a person living in Kingston and St. Andrews can go on Saturday from 9 to 3 o'clock to the National 
uh, Chase Hospital. There we have a blood collection center that is open every Saturday. So that is another possibility that the day that you are free to go and donate blood. Perfect. And what about the issue of age? Is there an age limit for donating blood? Can, are you ever too old or are you too young to okay. donate? There is important to know that you can donate blood if you are between 17 and 60 year old. For the person that have been donated and regular donor, they can go up to 65. So that is important to be aware. And a very popular, very popular myth is that you cannot donate blood because you've had a tattoo. No, that, I, I know that it is normal to have a tattoo, but we don't allow after one year to come and donate it blood. Remember that you will use needle and you can be infected. So we, there is a window period that we don't want to violate. So we wait one year after you donated the, you have your tattoo in place and you can come and donate it blood. Don't be scared. <laughs> and finally, Vegetarians think that they cannot give blood because they simply do not have enough iron. <laughs> okay, that is not true. Starting with a healthy lifestyle, we know that eating more vegetable and fruit, we are doing well. So vegetarian person don't have to be scared. You, we will take you through the process of what you will do when you're donating blood, and we will check your hemoglobin level, doing a test, and that will let me know if you are able to donate or not. So vegetarian is not an uh, excuse to come and donate it blood. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. Is there anything else you want to say? Yes, I want to say something that is very important. Please, it's not only National Blood Transfusion Service at 21 Slipen Road where you can come and donate it blood. There are 10 blood collection centers island-wide, and I please encourage everybody to come and donate blood. We know that in the last, well, eight months, the increase of accident in Jamaica have been affected. So the way that we can save that life is sometimes the need of blood. Also, I would like to encourage people to keep donating blood. Why? Because PAHO and WHO want in 2020 that our country be 100% voluntary donors. So without your support, we will not be in that target. Please come and donate the blood. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Yes. Taylor. It was good having you. So having some of those major fears and misconceptions dispelled, I sure hope that you will face your fear today and donate blood. All the best. We've come to the end of Jamaica Magazine for this Friday. Thanks for spending time with us. Remember to keep up to date with the latest government info. Join us online at jis.gov.jm or watch our programs on our YouTube channel. And be sure to check out our social media platforms. You may also catch a new edition of Jamaica Magazine tomorrow on this very station. Until then, I'm Theodore Henry. Take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.